you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's wendy and the other day on my instagram story i asked people for questions most simply out of boredom but i actually got some really good ones that i wanted to sit down and answer i'm on my front porch or like front stoop if you will it's a really beautiful day it's like saturday in boston and i just thought i would sit down and answer these the first of which is from my good friend bailey she says what is your favorite thing about boston which honestly i could go on about all the things i love about boston but i would say to narrow it down to like top three four things is i love being by the ocean i didn't realize how much i missed it while living in colorado i love being able to like drive by and see the water or if i just feel like walking on the beach i can like drive to a spot i know and just like hear the water I love the four seasons because Boston has had a really beautiful, distinguishable fall and we're slowly transitioning into winter, which I'm looking forward to. I've heard that spring, like the transition from winter to spring isn't as distinct. So we'll see what my experience is with that, but love the four seasons. And then I also just love living right outside the city. I live in a suburb of Boston called Brighton. So I can just take the train from where I live into the city and access like all the cool things, shops, restaurants there. I just really like the vibe of like the city itself. And I love being able to live right up against it. But then at the end of each day, I can go home and like have a little peace and quiet, like in a bit more residential area. And on that topic, one of my subscribers asked me, how is the nightlife in Boston? Which I don't feel like I can adequately answer because obviously I moved here during COVID. So most things are shut down as they should be. And I have a long list on my phone of restaurants like sorted by type of food and then bars that i'm trying to go to i know all of the good clubs i know that boston has a great nightlife i'm just not able to access it right now so i'm hoping that if a vaccine is developed in 2021 and i am to continue living in boston after my time at vu i can experience the nightlife a bit more because i love me some dancing that was another question someone asked do you like dancing and the answer is yes i'm not very good at it but my friend Bailey, she asked a lot of great questions. She said, what was the hardest part about moving? And this I had to think on and then it like hit me in the head. Logistically, everything that's difficult about moving was just made so much more difficult by COVID. Like always having to have a mask on us, which isn't that difficult, but making the hotel reservations, not being able to like interact with anyone as we went, we couldn't like stop anywhere and visit family. I would have loved doing that. And then also just moving here kind of like while everything is shut down, if we had to go somewhere and had to use the bathroom, most places, at least in Boston, they won't let you use the restroom unless you're a customer. So it just made like every little thing feel so much harder. And then also we had to get tested before I came here. And then when I got here, I found out I had tested positive for COVID. So that logistically was the most frustrating part of moving. But I would say emotionally, it was the fact that when I left Colorado, I left the place that I had lived for five years. Four was for college and then one was like, as a real adult working full time. And saying goodbye to that chapter of my life was just really, really significant because Colorado was the last place I lived when my mom was alive. So moving to Boston kind of marked this next chapter of my life that she will never be a part of. And that made me so deeply sad and it was really difficult for me and it still is. Um, but I would say the move itself really like brought all those feelings out because I felt like not only was I saying goodbye to what had become my home after five years, I was also saying goodbye to all of the memories that I shared with my mom in those five years. And obviously they're still with me, but that was definitely like really tough. The last question Bailey asked was such a thinker. She said, what is the biggest lesson 2020 has taught you? And man, I feel like there have been so many lessons I could think of, but honestly on the note of moving, I would say, Whatever it is in life that scares you or that you've always thought about doing, you should do that because I never thought that I would live in Boston. I have loved the city. I've just been so infatuated with it for like the last six or seven years of my life since high school, honestly. And I never thought I would get into graduate school. I never thought moving out here would be possible. Like I'm super grateful for all my family, friends, everything that has culminated to me being able to make this move. I'm just so grateful to be here and so incredibly happy. Like I found such a spot where I'm like, wow, I'm really loving life right now, even despite all of the hell that 2020 has been. So I'd say the biggest lesson I've learned is do the damn thing and do what scares you because it will lead to such amazing things that you didn't know were possible. And it's gonna be tough and you're gonna cry like I do. But when you come out on the other side of that, you feel so amazing and empowered and proud of yourself and just like you feel like a new person. 
Now for some more light questions. My friend Holly said, how did you become a perfect human? False, that is you. Second question from Brittany. She said, how are you such a babe? And Brittany, if you weren't sitting in the back of class in physiologist toolbox on Wednesday, I would be looking at the back of your head. So you should be asking me who's really the babe here. My friend Tira said, when are you coming to visit? And my friend Tira lives in Alaska. So I'd love to visit her more than anything in the whole world. But if I'm being realistic, I imagine that COVID travel restriction things will forbid that from happening until at least summer 2021. But I've decided that if I actually finish this program, like if I make it out of here in one piece, I am going to treat myself with a one-way ticket to Alaska to come see you and potentially stay with you. So coming soon. My friend Hannah, she is my friend from Colorado and she just wrote me this letter, which I won't show you because it has our addresses on it. And it's this beautiful golden envelope. I don't think you can tell on camera, it looks yellow, but it's golden. And she wrote me the most beautiful letter. I love writing letters as most of you know. And so this just made my day. And she asked, what has been the most unexpected part of graduate school? And this I also had to think on and I narrowed it down to two things. One, I don't know what I was expecting, but the first, like week, if not couple months, I was having bad cases of imposter syndrome, which I didn't know was a thing until I was talking about it with my roommate, Allison. And I was just like, I don't think I belong here. Like, I think they accepted the wrong student. I am not as smart as everyone else. I don't deserve to be here. And it was only triggered by like certain things where I would feel like crappy about myself academically, but I wasn't expecting that. I don't know why I was so overjoyed that I got in, I got a scholarship. Like I was so proud of myself, but I like, I'm happy to report that that feeling has faded and I'm like, nope, you're a bad bitch. You work just as hard as everybody else to get here. I absolutely deserve to be here not even a question, but I wasn't expecting that intense feeling of like, oh man, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I also don't know what I'm doing after this. So that's daunting given how expensive schooling is. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing, a much happier thing to not expect. Are you done? I didn't realize how much after I settled and adjusted and was super like uncomfortable getting used to this new normal of my life that I absolutely love it here and I could totally see myself staying. Something I really like about myself that I know I definitely got from my mom is that I think I could reliably move almost anywhere and be happy and like find peace of mind. It's something my friend Sammy and I were talking about of how like, I don't know what that is, but like, I feel like my mom had like such like a traveler spirit. Like she could just pick up and start over somewhere new and like make friends, find a place to work, find like her spots around town that she loved and just like be happy. And I feel like I got that from her and I feel so lucky because I'm here and I was hoping I would be happy, but I'm so like happily surprised that like, holy crap, I do really like it here. And I could see myself staying here like in the long term. My friend Dan from high school asked what my favorite book is that I've read in the past two years. And I posted a video once about five books. I think everyone should read. I'll like link that in the description if you wanna watch because all of the books that are my favorite that I've read in the past two years are in that video. So I would say the first one is Dear Sugar. It's like this, like advice column piece um, where this like people write into this woman named Cheryl Strayed and she writes back to them. And it's about all different sorts of things, like all stories on different walks of life. And that book literally made me like laugh and cry. I love it so much. I could reread it a thousand times. It was like wonderful. And then the second one, it would probably be the five people you meet in heaven, which makes me sob, but I loved it. My friend Christina asked me, what classes am I taking next semester? Which is so funny because you asked me that question. I read it and then I was like, ha, I really need to figure that out because that was about a week ago and I was supposed to register for classes this morning. Wasn't able to register for classes because there's like been a mix up with my immunization record so I have to fix that but next semester I will be taking a biomechanics class a nutrition class a pulmonary pathophysiology class which is taught by my advisor and my favorite professor so I'm really excited for that one and then I will be taking a class on a literature review basically my program at BU I don't have to write a thesis but I have to do a literature review and that class is that's gonna happen like under that course code. And then the last question was asked by my friend Ben. He said, 
who do you want to fight with you in the zombie apocalypse, Sam from Lord of the Rings or Dobby from Harry Potter? Now, upon reading this question, I was like, oh, like, let me look up this Sam character. I'm sorry, I haven't seen the Lord of the Rings. Like, don't come for me. But I looked him up and I was like, oh, definitely him. He's way bigger than Dobby. He's probably stronger. But if I know anything, Dobby is a loyal, loyal creature. So I feel as if, if he liked me, if he liked me as much as he liked Harry, he would probably sacrifice himself for me. And not that he would be any good in a physical altercation, he can do that like snapping thing and just get us out of nowhere. And with zombies, they're so relentless, but they're so slow. So I feel like Dobby would really be advantageous. So I'm gonna say Dobby. And you know what, Ben? Please tell me what your answer is, because I'm curious. But yeah, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys liked it. You should subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that stuff, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.